Hello, so this is a video about the uh, Ukraine situation. So it was um, uh, on um, Wednesday morning, about four o'clock in the morning local time, when Russian forces launched their unprovoked um, invasion of, uh, of Ukraine. At five o'clock in the morning local time, President Putin um, addressed the Russian people live to saying that he had ordered these military operations with the twin objectives of demilitarizing and denazifying Ukraine. Uh, both uh, is an outrageous accusation to suggest that uh, um, Ukraine is in any sense a Nazi state, given that their president is Jewish and under 1% of the population is Jewish. Um, and to demilitarize, well, obviously, every country is absolutely entitled to a military. That would include Ukraine. You can see why Ukraine needs a well-armed military, because it's been constantly threatened and bullied by their neighbor, Russia. So for over two months, there was a massive Russian military buildup on the border of Ukraine. And um, Moscow proclaimed this was no threat to anyone. Of course, it was incredibly menacing and claimed they were absolutely were not going to invade. Only hours before their invasion, they said they were not going to invade. And indeed, they did um, invade. So days before that, they'd recognized these breakaway uh, regions, Luhansk and Donbass, as independent countries. Um, that's probably stage one before their absorption into the Russian uh, Federation. Um, so uh, a significant minority of Ukrainians are ethnically Russian and many many Ukrainians are Russian speaking though so since Ukraine became independent in 1991 that Ukrainian language has been raised in status so President Putin has really irked the way that Russia, Russian is no longer a co-official language of course Ukraine is absolutely entitled to pursue its own language policy Putin jealously guards his own independence saying that no one has any right to interfere in his domestic affairs and yet he arrogates to himself the right to interfere in the internal affairs of Ukraine. Um, so uh, the Ukrainians have attacked from four sides, uh, sorry, sorry, have been attacked from four sides. Russia attacked from the east, the Russians landed in the southern coast of Ukraine, the Russians uh, attacked from the Crimean Peninsula, which is Ukrainian sovereign territory, which the, uh, which the Russians um, seized in 2014, and Russian forces were, were, were um, based in Belarus, they attacked from the north. So the, the Ukraine has been attacked from three directions. Um, and they put, couldn't possibly defend a, a frontier over 2,000 kilometers. The thing is, the capital of Ukraine, Kiev, is only about 110 kilometers in the border of Belarus. So, after only 36 hours fighting, the Russian forces, they entered the outer suburbs of Kiev. So, President Zelensky has said he's fighting on, he's still in Kiev. He's posted videos, a live video showing that he's still in Kiev, and he's refused to flee the country, despite the United States trying to persuade him to do so. But, um, though that is gallant, that's also foolhardy. His role as president is not to fight, it's to stay alive. If he's killed or captured, that will really weaken them. So, um, uh, President Putin says he's not going to speak to Zelensky, and he's, he's not a, a, a valid into Locuta. So I suspect that um, President Putin will try and introduce a puppet president. So there was Viktor uh, Yanukovych, who was overthrown in 2014, and he fled from Ukraine to Moscow. So they might try and bring him back. Probably not, as he's so unpopular. He's been in convicted in absentia of high treason against Ukraine. Um, so um, but even before this invasion, Russia already controlled about 10% of Ukraine's landmass. I suspect they'll try and seize another 10%. They would like to subdue the capital city. It's a city of over 3 million people. The Russian army traditionally doesn't do well in urban settings where they cannot maximize their advantages of mobility and firepower. They'll probably grow increasingly frustrated at their in inability to uh, control the city and might start lash out, might start carpet bombing um, residential areas. So the uh, Russian army has, has had unarmed operatives attacking it's out of uniform outside the Geneva Convention the Ukrainian um, military has then followed suit and issued weapons to civilians saying here's the Kalashnikov go and defend your homeland um, so they're also outside the Geneva Convention you might say well the Russians started it now NATO is obviously is arming Ukraine but they're not actually going to fight so already at least 26,000 Ukrainian civilians have fled to neighboring European Union countries of Slovakia Poland um, and indeed to a non-EU country Moldova um, but the Ukraine has forbidden males aged 18 to, si to 60 from fleeing the country, saying it's your duty to stand and fight. Um, now, President Putin is trying to persuade the Ukrainian military to overthrow Zelensky, and he started, he's accused Zelensky and his, um, his Camarilla of being, of being drug addicts. Well, that's a new one, Vlad. I'd never heard him accuse them of, of drug addiction before, and he's not evinced the slightest evidence. A few days ago, he was accusing the um, Ukrainians of genocide, again, without citing any evidence whatsoever. Who was killed, and by whom, and when, and where? and how many and how are they killed and what's your proof of this so no corroboratory uh, particulars whatsoever so it was an utterly bogus uh, accusation who would believe a man who only 
hours before the invasion, vowed that he would not invade Ukraine. So obviously you can't trust a word that the Russian government says. Every government lies, but no government lies so much or so flagrantly as the Russian government. So this is met with a subdued reaction in Russia. Only about 28% of people were in favor of invading Ukraine before it began. That may have gone up a bit. There have been anti-war protests in Moscow, St. Petersburg and other cities. Already a couple of thousand protesters have been arrested, but I don't think many people will brave it because you know you'll lose your job at the very least. You need permission to demonstrate in Russia. That's almost never granted. Demonstrating without permission is a crime. They'll be called fascists and terrorists and things like that, be accused of rehabilitating Nazism. So I think this is a butcher and bolt operation by the Russians. They want to stay for about a month, wreck Ukraine. They would like Finlandization, as in Finland, it agreed in 1944 to be a neutral country, it neighbors Russia, never to have any military allies and to have a very small army. So Russia would find that acceptable with Ukraine, would like Ukraine to restore Russian as a co-equal language to the Ukrainian language and so on. Um, Putin cited these completely bogus pretexts for his invasion saying, well, Orthodox Christianity is the major religious domination of, of Ukraine, which obviously gives them no right to invade whatsoever, uh, and so forth. So United Nations Security Council resolution um, condemning this invasion has been voted down. Obviously, Russia is able to veto it on their own. But um, dis disappointingly, India voted against it as well. China voted against it. But in the UN General Assembly, no doubt the great majority of countries will vote against what Russia is doing. But that's under a different ch uh, chapter than United Nations chapter uh, of the United Nations Charter from UN Security Council resolutions and therefore General Assembly resolutions are only uh, a recommendation, they're not binding. So there have been huge sanctions imposed by the United States, Canada, the European Union, the United Kingdom on selling microchips and so on to Russia, on finance, on loans for Russia, um, on freezing the assets of many Russian oligarchs who hopefully over the year of Putin will say this time you've gone too far, you're absolutely crazy, we've got to back down. So the uh, Russian economy is reeling, the stock market lost over 50%, um, the Russian ruble has lost over 10% of its values, so it's already cost them hundreds of billions of dollars. But this far into it, I suppose Putin thinks he might as well carry on, teach the Ukrainians a very bloody lesson and intimidate their neighbours. That If you irk me, you shall pay a very heavy price. So already several hundred people have been killed, it's difficult to establish numbers. Um, the Ukrainians claim to have killed at least 450 Russian soldiers, I don't know if that's true. Um, and certainly civilians have been killed on both sides. So the Ukrainians didn't really prepare for this very well, didn't dig, dig anti-tank ditches, didn't blow up many, many bridges. They could have cut off water supply to Crimea, that peninsula controlled by Russia, but do you want three million civilians dying of thirst or drinking dirty water? But it would also present Russia with a huge logistical nightmare of providing sufficient drinking water to three million people or having to evacuate people as well. Um, so maybe the Ukrainians didn't believe this was going to happen. The invasion happened eight days after the West predicted it would happen. And the West began to think that a combination of arming Ukraine to provide a real deterrent and dissuading Russia by, by threatening severe sanctions was working. Obviously, it wasn't at the end. We shall see. So I think there'll be conventional war for about a month. There could be partisan operations if Russia doesn't withdraw. But I suspect Putin doesn't want to get mired in that. I think he'll seize a bit more land and then pull back. So that's enough for me. Thank you for watching.